Hello, I'm Nai Wang, and I'm a developer and also uh, been teaching online for the past uh, 14 years, since 2006. Uh, I've been helping teachers to teach online since then and using a very sophisticated and easy to use system called KP Compass. And what I'm here to present to you today uh, is how to effectively use it. Now, if you've seen me in the past at other FCCLA conferences, uh, you know that I love speaking about game, teaching the gamers and gamification and in a very um, uh, fast paced, but very uh, fun session, uh, speaking to you, to you teachers and students about that topic. Um, and that topic is still very relevant uh, today, but we'll say, show you how we can use gamification in an online learning environment to help uh, get kids engaged, but also learn uh, and master content um, with rigor. So we're gonna focus on mastery here first. And then we're going to talk a little bit about how our artificial intelligence system uh, adapts to each student. Uh, we're going to read the data uh, and can actually generate trends from that data to see how the students are doing. Um, we're going to customize uh, uh, for an IEP student. Uh, that's one of the most uh, amazing things that we can do is we actually can let you customize the material so that you can uh, create that type of differentiated instruction. And then also create projects uh, or use our projects to do PBL. So uh, this system uh, is all completely online. You can use your phone, tablet, even Xbox and PlayStation uh, on top of computers and laptops and, and whatnot. Um, and during COVID-19, I know that things are going to be up in the air. So we're planning for hybrid blended, sometimes online only if you go to lockdown. But in the traditional sense, you can use it as a flipped classroom concept so that you now students can learn the materials and you can spend more time in labs and discussion rather than teaching them the materials through lecture. So there's a lot of cool things you could do with that. And on top of that, I've got my three month quarantine beard to show off to all of you. I've never grown a beard before because it takes me so long to get to this point uh, that it, I never had patience for it. Anyway, um, enough with that. Uh, I do love uh, presenting in front of teachers all the time, uh, but uh, you get at least my smiling face on this presentation uh, about this. So first, let's talk about mastery. So here is our student, John Graduate. He's uh, highly anticipating gra graduating uh, uh, in the spring, um, and, uh, and, and this is his classes that he's taking. So in our particular system, you can actually have students in multiple classes. So let's say they're taking multiple things. Like for example, surf safe, uh, a very important topic now, uh, especially with the pandemic. So let's look at surf safe. Now we have all these modules and we have these tests. Like you can see here, John has only tested at 25% for this particular test. So not very good, John, uh, not very good. But, uh, but let me show you what, how our adaptive system works. So we got our module here. Let's look at forms and contaminants. So our forms and contaminants has our learning objectives right up here at the top. And then we have our concepts that we're learning. So let's click on big six pathogens. Now, there's a lot of pathogens out there and we need to be aware of it. Um, one of our key uh, hallmarks is that our, our materials are read aloud to the students. So that it's another pedagogy so that students can read along with the narrator. Uh, we also have a text -to speech engine that allows the, the page to be read to them using a, a computerized voice. But we also allow plugins. So if you use Google Translate, this can be translated into Spanish. And I also have a plugin called Read Aloud, which you see up here. Uh, and what it does is it actually lets you choose the, 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 the voice. So you could have it like, uh, like UK English. So I have a UK English. Um, voice that's read, read to me, but it also if you use Google Translate, you can actually have it read to them in Spanish as well. Because we, what we do is we use open web standards, so that means that the content itself can be uh, used by other um, plugins and materials without having to go through any special headaches. So there we go. So here is our section on forms and contaminants. <clears throat> and once the student is done, then what they do is they go to and click on check your knowledge. And what this is, is it actually engages what we call our personal digital tutor. And pretend that I'm your tutor and you come to me and you say, I just studied forms of contaminants. And I'll say to you, okay, I'm gonna ask you a bunch of questions about the stuff you just read here. And I'm gonna quiz you on it. So here I go and I'm gonna quiz you on it. You can answer some questions and whatnot. And after you're done, then I will give you my analysis. Now, instead of giving them a, a percentage or something like that, or telling them what they got wrong, what we do is we actually tell them 
uh, in the form of colors, how they perform. So you can see that I've already done this uh, a, a bunch of times and, uh, and I have a red and green uh, and yellow. So this is actually the, the result screen of my last attempt. So you see that we have mastered parasites and fungi, but we need to improve on these areas. This is what we call a mastery process. So, and I, what this, so this, what this tells the student is you need to go back and revisit this material and you really need to go and study hard on that one because you demonstrated very lack of depth of knowledge. So after the student has gone through and studied again, I will ask, uh, they'll do another check, check your knowledge and I'll ask different questions this time because what I'm trying to do is I'm measuring their depth of knowledge of the content that they just went over. So uh, so in this case, we see that I've already, I said, hey, you did well at parasites, fungi, and other toxins, good job. But if I go back to the module, you notice that that is gone. That's because what we're doing is we're limiting the content down through the remediation process. So they're only gonna remediate content that they, they need to improve. So as they go through this, this will go from uh, eight pages of content down to four, down to three, down to two, and down to possibly even one, which then they'll need to revisit again until they mastered it. So if I wanna see that page, I can turn on, turn off remediation, and I can see that page that's already green, it's removed. So this really helps the students focus on the content that they really need to remediate. And as you know, remediation is king uh, because that's how you learn. Uh, in addition to that, uh, a student, you, see, you notice here we have awards here. So what happens is uh, this student, uh, that we have a, a mascot here named Chromie that actually travels the world. So if this, when the student takes a, a check your knowledge, they receive an award. It's a nice little postcard of the uh, Chromie strip in Hong Kong in this case. Each module is assigned a random city in the world and they'll just be getting snapshots. So, so the beauty of this is that if they're really curious, they can click on the picture and voila, they can see where that picture comes from in Hong Kong. And there's also three levels of, of, of pictures that they, they'll get received. So they do poorly on it, they'll get a picture in front of this rundown apartment complex. If they do better, they'll get better pictures. And if they do ma they master the content, then they'll get a picture in front of some sort of recognizable landmark, monument, or whatnot. So this gives you a little bit of world geography as they're learning uh, through this process, part of the gamification process. So there we have it. So that's the mastery process. And, and that's also how our artificial intelligence adapts to each student. Because what it does is it builds a profile for the student and picks questions according to how they performed previously. And it also compares that data to other students uh, who are in the same module and then uses questions in that regard. That's what we call item response theory, which is a highly scientific way of saying, hey, I know how these questions are and I know which ones to get to students. Um, so that's how we do that. Now on to our next top topic, you know, we talked about adaptive AI. Now let's look at reading data and trends. So this is a very important aspect of our system because what it does is it tells you how the students are performing in each module, how they've tested. So here's their test scores. Uh, but what you can do is you can drive some really good uh, inferences from this. First off, you can look at see that students are doing really well with keeping food safe. So what that means to me is that I don't have to spend a lot of time on that topic since most of the students have demonstrated mastery on that. But we go over here to 16, food safety management, maybe I needed to spend more time on that. So this list actually lets you as a teacher uh, make an uh, informed decision on how, where to spend more time on which topics. So you can say, okay, we only need to spend 15 minutes, we can have a little discussion about it, but let's spend 45 minutes or half an hour on forms of contaminants because the students clearly aren't getting to the right level of mastery. In addition to that, let's say you're doing the surf state certification. Uh, these two columns are very important because what it does is it tells you how, what, how they performed on the test. And also, the most important thing is this average column actually represents engagement. So if they have a, a full, fuller bar, then that means that they have a high level of engagement versus this one here, low level engagement. Uh, and then you, you can also tell their level of mastery. So Terry here has pretty good uh, engagement, but hasn't mastered uh, most of the content yet, so she's still yellow. So you, you can make a, a data-driven decision as to whether or not this student should take the surf safe for manager certification. Uh, this saves uh, a ton of money because then you don't have to do retests. We get programs all the way up to 100% pass rate by reading this data correctly. Okay, so that's how you read data. Now let's look at how we customize for an IEP. Um, so this is my teacher, so yeah, the wonderful venerated chef chef here. 
And how we customize for IEP is very simple. So first off, I'm going to go to the IEP masterclass, and I'm going to expand the content for uh, uh, coloring arts. So I'm going to pick a few uh, topics here. So I'm going to do this, 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 and this, for example. And I could always add more later. Then I'm going to save that. And what it does is it puts those chapters into that particular um, class. So it's almost like you're creating a custom book. And what I could do now is I could go open the book up and I could go, okay, I want knife skills second. So I could actually rearrange it and save that. And then I go into food preparation basics and I say, okay, in this particular class, we don't do calculating costs. We don't do flavors, herbs, and spices then I can remove that. But more importantly, if you're customizing for an IEP student, then you could actually go in and remove particular topics. So let's say we don't talk about dry measurements. These are actually pages. So if I click on scoops and labels, this is what's covered. And I could go back and I could say, I don't want, I don't want that either. Um, cancel that. So this le level of customization is very popular with uh, teachers with special needs students with, because then they can then uh, create these uh, customized classes and, and, and whittle down the information to what they exactly need. So if we don't want to cover all these different cooking techniques, poaching, simmering, blanching, steaming, you can totally do that and make those levels, that level of customization. Uh, now, the other thing that we can do here is we could actually create custom tests. So I'm going to open up our test bank and I'm going to create a checkpoint test. And what this does is a tr traditional summative exam, which then you, that you create. I'm going to call this one um, measurement test. And then what you do here is then you could uh, open the test up. And here's all the different modules that you see here. And let's open up the item bank for coloring measurements. So this is the first page of content, measurements and conversions. And you see that we have a lot of questions for that one particular topic that actually contributes to the artificial intelligence. Imagine if you're a tutor and you're only given two questions to quiz a student, and those are the only two questions you can ever quiz them. How, how well can you uh, measure their depth of knowledge on those two questions? So you can see that it's uh, uh, it, uh, a thing called uh, abundant assessment. So through lots of questions, we can figure out how um, to give the students the questions. So here we see we have Bloom's taxonomy, we have um, um, remember, apply, understand, uh, and all they're all classified. So right now I just created a five question test. So I'm gonna click on save. And then what it does is it saves the test and then I go back up to the top. And then now the students can take it online on their computers, on their phones and whatnot. But let's say you have a student who can't take, do it on a computer. Then you go to printer friendly and then you could actually change the number of distractors from four to three to two. So this is a great way to customize it for, uh, uh, for those types of students as well. And then you can also create a printed version as well of it so that then you can see, okay, these are the questions and these are, this is the answer key. So then you could actually do a, in this or a traditional paper and pencil quiz if you want to. Pop quiz, you know, let's take out our papers and then answer that. But I want you to focus on these two questions. There are four points in a court and one liter is approximately how many cups. So I'm going to do this again. And what happens is every time I do it, the questions are randomized. So that if you want to, to curb cheating, for example, you, know, you keep those uh, eyes from straying from their paper, then you would just then create A and A version A, copy and paste it, create version B, then create a version C. We also go as far as uh, changing the distractor, uh, the multiple choice distractors and the answers as well. So the answer might be A this time, but it might be C next time on the other version. So, those, so that level of, of, um, of change really makes it hard for students to cheat, <laughs> especially if you're doing this at home. Uh, makes it, make, it makes it a little more difficult. Okay, so that's that test. Now the other test I'm going to show you here is what we call a dynamic test. And what this is is a formative assessment that actually uses magic and wizardry from Harry Potter. No, actually it doesn't. It uses artificial intelligence. And what this does is it actually selects questions uh, that are based on how they do and check your knowledge. So basically the, the tutor is saying, okay, these are the questions I believe the student are struggling in. So we're going to test them on those questions and see how they do. And you can choose the number of questions they can take, uh, they can have, and that uh, it gives you a good, really good assessment of their uh, overall ability using a summative exam, uh, using a formative exam before they go into the summative exam. So that's how you do that. 
So that's how you customize for an IEP. Now, the last thing I'm going to show you is project-based learning. So in our program, we have a lot of projects. So I'm going to go to one of our favorite projects here in Introduction to Culinary Arts, Culinary History. And we have, let's, let's say we want to work on a project called Culinary Chef Biography. So we have our problem statement, the pages of information that's required, the, the steps to solve this problem, and then evidence. So you can see that I wrote, bam, uh, you can make millions. And they also have grading rubrics. So basically what happens is when a student starts, it starts out with a red circle. And as they complete evidence points, and answer questions, then it starts to reveal. So this is another project called the Next Food Network Producer, so that, which they're supposed to do a, a in-class presentation and pitch a show. Very popular, uh, but one to do. And here's cuisine and contrast. So you can see here, you know, we have the, you know, these questions that are asked, and I wrote YouTube, and this teacher rejected it. And then here, predict what nature factor changes in cuisine will happen or recur. And I wrote COVID-19 and the teacher liked that. I'm supposed to upload a file. And then I got 13.33% on the grading rubric. So that's how you can utilize our program and our system to really effectively teach the students online and keep them engaged. So I hope you really like uh, what I've shown you here. If you have additional information, please feel free to contact me. Here's my email address. And uh, my phone number is 800-701-6323, extension 913. Feel free to reach out to me, and I hope that you make really good use of our program. We have programs in culinary arts, facts, food science, marketing, a lot of different subjects that we cover uh, to really help um, with uh, engagement with students online. Thank you, and have a good day.